Okay. So now we've discussed how we can calculate the lift and also the moment on an airfoil, whether it's thin or whether it has an arbitrary thickness. But we're still missing a piece of the puzzle, which is how to compute the drag on an airfoil. So let's talk about that briefly now. So recall we talked about D'Alembert's paradox. Which was that in inviscid flow, no drag is predicted, which we all know is contrary to reality. So the solution is to include viscous effects in the flow. Now, this allows us to create, this uh, allows us to create drag through two mechanisms. So there's two mechanisms, broadly speaking, that create drag. One is skin friction. So this is due to the shear stress on the surface. And the other, is pressure drag. Sometimes you'll also see this called form drag. This is due to flow separation and it has to do with the flow condition and the shape of the object. So first let's think about skin friction. We can estimate the skin friction on an airfoil using a model of the flow over a flat plate. So let's start by thinking about laminar flow. And you should have learned a little bit about laminar and turbulent flow in your second year fluids course. Uh, and essentially, laminar flow is steady, whereas turbulent flow has small scale disturbances and chaotic unsteadiness um, that increases the transport of momentum between the main flow and the boundary layer, but also tends to increase friction. So let's start by looking at what goes on if we have laminar flow over an airfoil. So since we're going to model our airfoil as a flat plate, I'll draw a flat plate. And with our free stream velocity be infinity, the plate has length c. This is the x-coordinate. And as you'll talk about in much greater detail in your third year fluids course, the boundary layer will develop over this flat plate. And at any location x, the boundary layer thickness is delta. And this means that outside of the boundary layer, the velocity is v infinity. Inside the boundary layer, it's less, and of course it must be zero at the wall. So there's a further assumption that we're making here because we're looking at this flat plate at zero angle of attack. However, we'll use this as a model for the skin friction on an airfoil even at non-zero angles of attack. So this is a very approximate method, but it gives us an idea 
of how the friction scales. So for this flat place at zero angle of attack case, there's actually an exact solution. This is one of the few problems that there is a analytical solution to the Navier-Stokes equation. We get that the friction coefficient, which we just describe as the drag coefficient on the top of the plate over the dynamic pressure times planform area, which is of course because it's a flat plate the same as the drag coefficient on the bottom over Q infinity S, is given by the following. CF equals 1.328 over the square root of Reynolds number based on the length of the plate C. And so this Reynolds number is rho infinity V infinity C over mu infinity. And the boundary layer thickness delta is 5.0x over square root of Reynolds number based on x, where Reynolds number based on x is the Reynolds number based on how far we've traveled along the plate. And it's given by that. Now, in turbulent flow, Unfortunately, there's no analytical solutions. All treatments are empirical and approximate for turbulent flow. So far, no one's solved the turbulent Navier-Stokes equations analytically. But again, we can come up with a friction coefficient. There's a different dependence on Reynolds number this time. And the boundary layer thickness will consequently have a different form as well. And so we can use these to estimate the, the drag on the airfoil, but in a typical real flow, if this airfoil or flat plate is located in the free stream, um, where we have what we call clean flow coming in, what we're actually going to have is initially have a laminar flow, which then transitions to a turbulent flow. So to model this, we again have our free stream velocity, and here's our flat plate. And so we've got some boundary growth in laminar flow. Then there's a transition, and then the boundary layer starts growing as a turbulent boundary layer. So this is the laminar region. This is the turbulent region. And this transition happens at an x location, x sub cr, for critical. And that is set by a critical Reynolds number, which is rho infinity, v infinity, x cr over mu infinity. So there's a critical location defined by the Reynolds number. So the challenge in practice is knowing what the critical Reynolds number is, determining RDCR. In reality, this Reynolds number depends on many parameters.
including things like surface roughness. And so values of this critical Reynolds number need to come from either experiments or some kind of semi-empirical theory. But if you do have a value of the critical Reynolds number, it's possible to estimate the transitional location and figure out in what region the flow is laminar, in what region it's turbulent, and get a more accurate estimate of the total drag on the airfoil as a result.